Welcome back. We're going to start a new chapter of Software Foundations today titled Poly, Polymorphism and Higher Order Functions. When last we left off, we had been defining lists and proving things by induction on lists. Now, the lists we defined were actually specialized only for natural numbers. So we gave a definition that was something like this, not exactly. We used slightly different constructor names, but we had nat list, which was a type, and it had a constructor for the empty list, nil, uh, or the list that contained at least one element. That, that constructor there was cons, and cons carried two pieces of data along with it, uh, a natural number and another list. Now, suppose that the next day after defining nat lists, uh, you, maybe your boss gave you the assignment to define them, and the next day your boss comes in and says, oh, actually, we need some bool lists around as well. Now, the terrible way to do that would be to code up a new type for bool lists right away. Uh, maybe just by copying and pasting that type in and changing the word nat to the word bool everywhere that it occurs. So then you would have a type bool list with its own constructor bool nil and bool cons, because of course we would want them to have different constructor names, so there's no ambiguity about that. Uh, and now we have another type for bool lists. Now the next day someone comes along, your boss wants another list for another type and another type, and this would be terrible. You would not want to have to keep copying and pasting code to be able to have lists that contain elements of a new type that you hadn't considered before. OK, of course, this would be a terrible way to program. It's not the way we program. We've known for a long time in programming languages how to do better. And the way is with something called parametric polymorphism. Uh, so polymorphism here refers to the notion of many forms. That's the Greek roots there, poly and morph, many forms. We define types that can take on many forms, as it were, is the idea. With lists, here's what that looks like in cock. Our type list is now going to be parameterized. There's that word parameter. I mentioned parametric polymorphism a minute ago. We are parameterizing this type so that it can take on many forms. And we're doing so by parameterizing it on another type. So here, x is going to be the name of a type that is in scope inside of this definition of list. OK, so you give list a type x, and it gives you back a type. You can even think about this now as a function, in fact. List is now a, a sort of type level function that takes in a type and gives you back a type. Now, what is the type that it gives you back? Well, it's the type of lists that we've been working with um, conceptually so far. We only need to have one constructor name nil, because we're not going to have like bool nils and nat nils and other things. And only one constructor cons. Cons is going to take in an argument x of type capital X. So the type of the element at the head of the list is that type that was passed in to list. And it's going to continue uh, with the tail there, which is another list. But here it's a list of x, capital X. Right? It's not a list of bools. It's not a list of nats. It's a list of x. So we're applying list here, indeed, as, as a function, to the argument x uh, to get the type of the tail there. OK, so we have type level functions that we can use in Coq, which uh, is maybe more powerful than some languages you're accustomed to working in. We can even see that if we check what the type of list is here, it is indeed of type uh, so <laughs> this is where it gets confusing to talk about. Uh, sometimes I'm using the word type with a lowercase t, and sometimes I'm using it with an uppercase t. So I will try to say uppercase type uh, to disambiguate that for a little while here. List is something that is of type, capital type, arrow capital type. All right, so it takes in a type and gives us back a type. And that x in the definition of list is now a parameter. It's a parameter not just to list, but as it turns out, to the constructors nil and cons as well, because they need to know what capital X is inside of their body. So if we look at nil, for example, here, if I can take nil and apply it to nat, that has type list nat. So you can see I'm passing in nat as an argument to nil at this point. Same thing with cons. So if I want to construct, uh, say, the list that contains just the nat 3, how would I do that? 
It's actually a fairly verbose expression at this point. Don't worry, we're going to see how to simplify this in a sec. Uh, but I've got interior here, the empty list of natural numbers. So I have to apply nil to nat because it's parameterized on it now. And then I'm going to kind of cons the nat three onto the front of that. But cons now additionally takes in that parameter, which is the type of the elements of the list. OK, so cons nat three onto nil nat. That is a list nat. So that whole thing is a list of natural numbers. And you'll notice that when we print that out, we don't get that nice list syntax that we're used to so far in Coq. Uh, don't worry, we're going to see how to recover that in just a bit here. OK, uh, so what is the type of nil actually? Uh, it is something that takes in x and gives us back a list of x. But the syntax for this is, well, a bit different than some of the types we've seen so far. For these parameterized types, these parameterized polymorphic types, we're going to write it as for all. Now, that's similar to how we've been writing, say, for all natural numbers when we prove theorems about them. In fact, there is a, a close similarity there. And underlying all of this in the theory of Koch, uh, there's a reason why these are both written with the same syntax. We're not there yet. It'll take us a while to explain that. For now, just tuck away in your head that when we're using parameterized types like this with uh, inductive type definitions, uh, we say for all. So nil is something of type for all x colon type list x. Because nil has type list x for any type x, uh, that means nil uh, suffices, can have the type a uh, list of bool, list of nat, whatever. The empty list uh, can have any of those types because it doesn't have any elements in it yet. Cons is a little more complicated. So it takes in a type x, and then it takes in a value of that type x. Right, so if, if x here were bool, then this value of type x would be a bool. It would be either true or false. It also takes in a list of x's. So that's the tail of the list. Uh, x here was the head, list x is the tail, and gives us back a list of x's. Right, So that's the list that contains the head as well as the tail. And you can see that type down here in the response as well. Uh, in our cock files, um, as we've seen before, in these vernacular files, this for all quantifier is actually a prettified version of the word F-O-R-A-L-L. Remember that. Uh, it, if you have your editor set up to prettify these symbols, it'll look like the nice upside down for all symbol from, from logic that we're used to. Uh, or if you're reading this in a plain text editor, it will just be F-O-R-A-L-L. -L. Either way is fine. So as some examples programming with our lists that we've coded up now, uh, we could try consing two onto one and nil. So that's the list that would contain two followed by one. It's pretty verbose syntax at this point. We'll simplify it soon. And we can also write uh, polymorphic versions of functions that we've written that were specialized before for natural numbers. So before we wrote a function that would repeat a particular natural number a given number of times, here's a version of that function that is polymorphic. Uh, for any type, it can repeat something that many times. So you give it a type, you give it a value of that type, you tell it the count, the number of times that you want to repeat that value, and it gives you back a list that contains that value that many times. Uh, how does it do it? Uh, the algorithm is the same as before. Uh, we match against count, uh, do something different, whether it's zero or the successor of some other natural number. If it's zero, we return the empty list. But remember, we have to pass in x, the type of elements in that empty list, uh, to nil, because nil is parameterized on that type at this point because of our inductive type definition. Uh, if we've got one more than some other natural number, then we need to add one occurrence of x onto the list. So we're consing x onto the front and then repeat uh, with that smaller count value, one smaller value, uh, so that eventually we uh, get down to zero with it. Now, again, we have to pass x in in both places here. So cons as a constructor here is now parameterized on that type. And repeat, you can see it right up here, is parameterized on that type as well. So we have to pass x in. Uh, if we didn't, then we would get an error message when we try to compile that. In this environment, the term x, this guy right here, has type capital X, while it's expected to have type type. Well, of course, that's because we left out the first parameter, which is supposed to have type capital type. And so Koch is thinking, I'm trying to pass x in as that. And of course, that's not what I meant. So let's restore that. 
and we'll be able to compile it. And now you could use that to do what, what you would expect. Uh, for example, if we repeat the natural number four two times, then we're going to get the list that contains four twice. So that's what that little uh, example shows. Uh, we can use it at different types, though, and that's the win from this parametric definition that we've given. Uh, for example, we could repeat false once, and so that gets us the list containing just false. Okay, so that wraps up our first introduction to parametrically polymorphic types in Coq here. Uh, we've done them for lists. Soon we're going to see how to improve the syntax and create uh, other kinds of polymorphic types as well.